So let's talk about cortisol and stress. So cortisol, what is it? Elevated cortisol levels, what does it do to your body and how do we basically heal ourselves from that? So cortisol, it is a hormone that's secreted by our adrenal glands. And the primary action that happens when we release cortisol is our blood sugar gets um, elevated and released. And that's in response to stress. So when we get stressed, our blood sugar increases, and that's to aid in the recovery from that stressor. So that's a very natural, um, you know, normal physiological response that we need to our stress. We need our cortisol. It's a good thing. Now, in the right dosage, in the right time. So the trouble and the, uh, the damaging effects of cortisol happens when they're chronically elevated or sometimes chronically lowered. And that's another subject, but I'm going to focus on chronically elevated today. So what elevates our cortisol? Again, stress. What causes it to be chronically elevated? Constant stressors. What do I mean about stressors? I mean your relationships, right? Your friendships, your coworkers, who you share a home with, your family, you know, any kind of drama that you have with those people. Do they stress you out? Are they negative all the time? Do they bring you down? Work, career, again, stress with work. You're trying to climb the ladder. Your boss is down your neck all the time. You know, you're late to work. Um, you're always, you know, in a rush. You're always stressed out about uh, the next deadline. That's all stressors. Traumatic events that happen to you. Um, you know, tragedies, losses, your mourning. Um, and then there's more of the physical. This is more emotional and mental. You know, poor food choices, that's a stressor, right? If you're eating inflammatory foods that cause a bad, you know, inflammatory response in your system, if you're eating foods they have sensitivities to that don't sit right with you, um, that are very processed, that cause your blood sugars to elevate all the time, throws your hormones out. Over-exercise. Exercise is good, but over-exercising is not good. Remember, your exercise is only as effective as your ability to recover from it. So if you're over-exercising, you're not eating well, you're not sleeping and so forth, it's not going to be very effective. In fact, it's detrimental to your health. So stressors, increased stress levels causes the increased cortisol levels. When it's chronically elevated, that is a problem. Now the acute spike in cortisol is good, right? You work out, you have a hard workout, your, your cortisol levels elevate, blood sugar goes up, that all helps you recover. Now, as long as it goes back to normal in a healthy range, that's good, that's fine, that's what we want. It's when it stays elevated that you start having the problems. So, chronically elevated cortisol levels, what does it do to your body? A ton of stuff. It decreases your thyroid function. So, thyroid, that has to do with your metabolism. How and, um, how basically burning calories. Your ability to burn calories, what your body does with the calories you consume. Blood sugar, again, remember, the action that happens when your cortisol elevates, your blood sugar goes up. So chronically elevated blood sugar levels, not good. That means your insulin is now chronically elevated. What does that lead to? Insulin resistance. Insulin resistance then leads to diabetes, not good. And this is very common. A lot of practitioners actually test for blood sugar. What they need to be testing for is insulin. It's the same test, so they, they opt to test for the glucose. You want your practitioner to test for insulin. This is the biggest indicator um, to detecting being pre-diabetic. Pre so suppressing immune system, another major one, right? It affects your gut health. So what's, you know, the majority of your immune system is in your gut. If you're eating crappy foods, if you're eating a ton, a ton of sugar, processed foods, things that you're sensitive to, things that you're intolerant to, maybe have an allergy to, has an inflammatory, causes an inflammatory response in the gut, that severely suppresses your immune system and its ability to function, right? You're gonna catch every cold, every virus. You're going to keep that cold and it's gonna take you a lot longer to fight off that virus um, if you were to have a healthier functioning gut. Right, you, if you get injured, it's gonna take you longer to recover from that injury because your immune system has been suppressed. Decreased liver function. Um, liver, it's your ability, it's primary role is to detoxify your body. So if you're not able to detox your body as well as you should, you have a lot of the crap that should be getting out of your system still floating around and you end up absorbing and holding on to those bad things. Sleep disruption. A lot of people with elevated uh, cortisol levels chronically have trouble falling asleep. Or they can fall asleep easily, but they have trouble staying asleep. Um, so quality sleep is definitely affected. Now, what do all of these things have to do with weight loss and fat loss? It all inhibits your ability to lose fat. Why? Because that all affects your hormone production and regulation. Hormones 
that's the name of the game when it comes to body composition, right? Your body fat levels and your lean mass muscles, lean mass uh, levels. So if your hormones are imbalanced or you're not producing the right ones, um, that's a big problem that affects a lot of different systems in your body. So what to do if you have elevated cortisol levels? Okay, you're gonna have a lot of symptoms of um, fatigue or not being able to recover from your workouts. Um, you're gonna have a lower sex drive. Um, or it may not even be something that you can detect. Sometimes people just need to get tested and the best way to get tested is to reach out to a qualified provider to, te to test DHEA. And the best way to test those levels, DHEA, is to do a, um, a salivary test. And they'll test four times throughout the day and they'll take the average of those four and that'll give them um, answers to your cortisol levels. So um, not all providers do that and they don't always do it correctly. So I will link um, a network of people below on the YouTube channel about how to find those providers and how to interpret those test results. So you're testing, you know your elevated um, cortisol levels, either by your symptoms or by that test, what do you do? You need to lower your stressors. So how do you do that? You first need to make sure your nutrition's in check. You need to make sure that you're eating whole foods, you're eating plenty of protein, plenty of plants, lots of color, big variety, getting rid of the processed foods, getting rid of the chemicals, the um, pesticides and so forth in your diet, getting rid of anything that you have a sensitivity to, intolerance, allergy to, right? All of those things cause inflammatory responses, messes with your gut, then messes with the immune system and so forth, messes with the hormones. So diet is first, exercise is second. You must have a smart exercise regimen. Now, over-exercising is not good, but exercising, creating the right stimulus, remember we want that acute response to cortisol. So that's why high intensity exercise is great for that. Resistance training is great for that. Um, interval training is great for that, right? The right kind of exercise we want the right kind of stimulus and the ability to res to uh, recover from that stimulus. That's what we're looking for. Um, quality sleep, that's another huge one. A lot of people suck at sleeping right now and it's kind of frowned upon. It's kind of, I've made a blog post about this um, before where, you know, it's like, oh, you'll sleep when you're dead or, you know, I, I don't need sleep. I, you know, I just grind away all through the night. It's like, well, <laughs> you're not very productive person if you're not sleeping well. You're not going to be very healthy and live or very long if you don't sleep. So sleep quality is huge. Um, you know, the ability to fall asleep within a reasonable time is important. Now, if you're passing out as soon as you sit in a chair, that's an issue too. That's a big indication of sleep deprivation. So you need to be able to sleep for about seven to nine hours. Somewhere in between there is usually a sweet spot for adults. It needs to be quality sleep. You don't need to be taking um, a sleep aid that knocks you unconscious, right? Because those medications don't allow you to go through the natural sleep cycles. They literally knock you unconscious. So it's very different. Um, so quality of sleep, exercise, and diet is key. Then you move on to looking at other areas of your life, right? Are you happy? Are you surrounded by good, fun, positive people? Are you putting yourself in situations um, where you're stressed out all the time, where you're not supported, uh, where there's a lot of negativity? Do you have a hobby? Do you have things you like to do? Do you have books you like to read? Do you have music you like to listen to? Do you go out and enjoy the sunshine? Do you go outside? Do you take walks? Take baths? Um, get a massage? Be affectionate with your loved ones? You know, have sex with your spouse or your partner? It's really important. That's all um, very natural and a very healthy thing to do in your relationships. Uh, breathing techniques. I will list below in the, uh, the about me section about four, seven, eight breathing technique that helps a lot with helping to fall asleep with anxiety. When you get stressed out at certain um, times of the day, you can do this quietly uh, without anyone ever knowing. So four, seven, eight breathing is a really good one. Meditating, doing yoga, coloring, getting massages and so forth, just things to de-stress. And you can, you know, you don't have to get so overwhelmed try to incorporate all of this at once, but trying to do one thing at a time, a couple weeks at a time, and slowly mastering things until you find what works for you. It's all about lifestyle changes, and it's um, it surprises a lot of people about how simple it can be to find balance and health in your life. So eat well, exercise, de-stress, and, um, you know, just be a happy person and surround yourself with good people. So that's it for today. Let me know if you guys have any questions about anything. Just shoot me an email, send me a message on Facebook or so forth, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. See ya.